Okay, so a uh, quick lesson in how I mix air creep. Um, I've shown you that I've got my foam set up over here. I've got my um, air, comp air foam generator here and my compressor down here. Um, my initial pre-checks are to ensure that my output on my, on my um, compressor is at 90 psi. On this particular setup, I end up at 40 psi on here to generate the correct foam ratio. Um, my mix is all good to go, which I'll explain in another video. My uh, slurry water is all measured and in, which again, I'll explain all that in another video. Um, and I've got my drill ready to go. So I've got my cement in there now, that's mixed up really well. It's not going to leave any lumps or clumps in the bottom. And now, from this, we're going to put in the sand. I already have measured out my I think it's 18.98 litres of clean water. It needs to be clean water. That goes into my bucket. One. Two. So I know that that's my 18.98 or 19 litres of water. In my mix, I am using normal Action dish soap. So this is the local brand. You could use Fairy or um, Dawn or whatever it is that your country is. It's the sort of main main soap for. So this is 500 milliliters of soap to 18.98 liters, so 19 liters of water. I pour that in. This is the Dome Gaia recipe. So this has come from Dome Gaia and they specifically told me to use Axion dish soap in this country as this was the brand that they'd been trialed before and been seen to work. Uh, once you've got your soap in, uh, because of this, this soap is, will, this soap will decay quickly. So what I have here is uh, glycerin uh, pure glycerin USP I bought that on the internet um, and to my 500 milliliters of dish soap I need to add 30 milliliters of glycerin that goes into the mix that will help sustain the life of the bubbles the bubbles will last long enough for the mixture to set up and then mix it all in together give it a good roll around try not to make it too rough so you get too many suds on top but you want to mix the liquids together in the bucket. And that's my soap mixture ready to go. Officially, we need to measure, we need to weigh our foam. Unfortunately, my weighing scale is broke today, but I know my pressures. I know that every time it's coming out the correct way, but the foam should weigh between uh, 90 and 100 grams per litre, or if you're American, per quart of foam. Um, I know that my pressures create that amount, so today you won't see me doing it. But um, firstly, I get the foam generator running, so that I get my, 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 my wand primed and all my foam's coming through. The foam solution is coming through. So that's just the liquid. And then I turn on the compressor. You'll see the foam. Then turn the liquid turn into a foam. Uh, I need to I need to check my um, my gauges and make sure that I'm at the pressures that I know create the right foam for me. And then when I'm happy, I can begin mixing it in. This this device here that pushes the foam right down as far as possible. And the other great big tip I can give you is this spiral mixer works better when it's running backwards. So put the drill on reverse. Instead of sucking the foam down, it pulls the slurry up on top of the foam. So I've done that. 
got my indicator marks here for how much to fill it to to make the right quantity. And normally I would just overfill it because it will drop back as I mix it all together again. Turn off the liquid, turn off the compressor, and just make sure it all mixes up nicely. So the first thing I do is get rid of all that white foam on the surface. Get that all covered in cement. Then I can start going right to the bottom of the barrel and ensuring all the heavier cement slurry is being pulled up. See the bubbles as I'm starting to mix it. So I go down to the bottom, I get all around the barrel at the bottom. Go into the middle at the bottom. And then come up sort of halfway. right to the surface. You can see the colour of the cement slurry. The foam mixer now is very uniform. It's got like the texture of um, mousse, chocolate mousse. Yeah, nice and thick sort of texture, but I guarantee you that has dropped back, yeah. So I now need to just add a little bit extra to the mix. Perfect to the line. I can't stress enough how important it is that you mix that really well, create a really good homogenous mix. Um, some of the failures that I had in the early stages were due to me not combining the cement slurry with the foam properly. You, you kind of get left with these weak areas within the mix that collapse um, before the cement has had a chance to, to, to set up. Um, so yeah, proper mixing. Uh, drilling reverse with those spiral mixers really makes a difference, really helps. Um, and making sure you, all your quantities are good. So this stuff um, is quite thick and as such it does flow but it, I find that it doesn't always go into the corners as well so I always go around and completely agitate the mix to get it all into the corners um, making sure that my mesh is central within the mix as central as I can possibly get it really pack it down into my corners you can see that my mold system here it's leaking out under each one that used to happen onto the ground before but now I've made this surrounding box um, I can I can control where it goes and I use it in the next frame and when all boxes all frames are filled all panels are filled then it, it no longer matters you know it won't leak any further so I make sure that each bit is all packed into the corners all flowing nicely and then I want to smooth it off nice and level now air creek sort of feels like it grows it kind of you get rid of some and then there's more to go, it just keeps, keeps on coming. You start to see here some of these square lines, that's because my mesh is too high. So I push that down a bit further. Always be clean and tidy. I, I'm really, really, really picky with this, really anal with it. Um, 
you leave all these bits hanging around and they just harden and cause you trouble later when it comes time to fit in. Again here it's growing on this end, you can see there's more than needed. And that should stay where it is until it sets up. And you can move on to the next one. And this has, just to give you an idea of the consistency, uh, I can float the, the, the trowel on the surface. It has like a, like I said before, like a mousse sort of consistency. Uh, custard maybe, something can definitely compare it to food items but it, it's got a decent sort of um, surface tension to it these are obviously going to get a surface coat because aircrete is very soft to use and very brittle after the effect so you need to either render it or cover it in some sort of solid coating So it's only my own particular annoying ways that make me do it so smooth or try and achieve it so smooth all the time. But when you get little drops like that in it, like you can see there, it really doesn't matter because it's gonna, it's gonna have a coating on top of it. As long as you've got your volume there, you're good to go. So that mix has taken about an hour and 45 minutes to do five mixes which fills for me six frames and each frame is 1.44 square meters. This is newly poured fresh today and if the camera just pans over to there that is roughly 48 hours old over there um, and they're ready to be pulled out now. So they're ready to come out of the frames now. Uh, I then stack them over behind and leave them for a good two weeks. And I water them for two weeks. Uh, I keep them wet for two weeks. So to recap, I pour them in one day. I leave them for a full another day in the mold, otherwise they're too soft to break out. Then I uh, remove them from the molds. I stack them and I begin watering them and I water them for two weeks uh, that sh takes them to pretty much sort of 80 to 100 percent cured uh, and then I can start putting them up like I have done over here they're still curing they'll still take time to cure um, I'm expecting that they'll begin to crack but the mesh that I've put in between them should hold the different pieces together until it gets the finished render that will then create the solid structure. So, I just want to take two seconds to talk to you about cement and some of the lessons that, some of the mistakes I made, or one mistake in particular I made with cement. Um, I go to the hardware store here in the Philippines and I ask for Portland cement. Uh, unfortunately, you don't always get what you ask for. Um, and on one particular batch, I, I ordered Portland cement and I got what we call grade 1P, which in this country includes the addition of Pozolan, which is an additive that isn't cement. Uh, over time, it becomes cement-like, I now know. Um, but if we just take a look here, this was a panel that was removed under the same time frame as my others. And unfortunately, it was far too soft still and the whole panel cracked. That it uh, was made in the same way. The only change to the whole process was the addition of Pozolan into the cement, which the research that I've done since shows that um, it takes a lot longer to cure, uh, as is the, as what I found here. It cracks. You need to ensure that you buy pure type one, sorry, type one Portland cement.